Investors on January 20th last year, with investor pessimism rampant and calls for a market retest of 3,500 or lower throughout the strategist land and the S&P 500 trading around 3,900, I released a video titled, Two Things That Really Matter. The link to that video will be in the description below. Our investment team had been talking positively about our expectations for 2023, but back then, few people seemed to be listening. We had already published our 2023 outlook and followed it up with a stock talk titled, What Could Go Right? We gave a few reasons for our optimism during a period of uncertainty, backing it up with historical statistics combined with real-time data series. I felt uneasy releasing this video back then, and I've been doing this investment management gig for almost 30 years. As it turns out, our outlook for 2023 turned out pretty close to spot on in both price and time throughout the year, including the summer sell-off and calling for the fourth quarter lows and pivot higher almost to the day of our October 26th live stream. You can also find that link to the video with myself, Troy and Charles discussing the likely strength of the fourth quarter coming from November through year end. Investors, in this week's video, I'm returning to the exact same topic I addressed on Friday, January 20th, a year ago. Its title back then was, What Really Matters? This week, its title, The Two Things That Really Matter, Revisited. So investors, what really matters here? What two things above all else matter to investors? It's the same two things that matter most often as far as I see it. And those two things are intertwined, of course. First is inflation both its level, whether it's absolutely high or low, and sometimes more importantly, its trend. Is it rising or falling from a high or low level? And secondly, the level and trend of real interest rate components within nominal yields. This is also called the tips interest rate. This is the one that most strategists finally discovered and started discussing as critical, almost universally in a negative manner, near the market lows in late October of last year, right in front of the roaring late fourth quarter rally. Remember investors, all of those CNBC and Bloomberg interviews with strategists spouting the Fed's higher for longer message. We're discussing some academic notion of R star, whatever that is, right at the market lows in stocks and highs for bond yields. Unlike many others, we've spoken about real interest rates and real time inflation for over two years now. We'll cover them again right here. Real time inflation and real time real interest rates. And unfortunately, Opposite of January 20th, 2023, they're currently saying that seasonally curb your enthusiasm here and there's likely a pullback that's likely coming fast and furious in the first quarter. Let's cover it again. Overall, goods inflation peaked in late first half of 2022. Commodity pricing slumped, used car pricing collapsed, container shipping rates collapsed, most industrial metals round tripped. The price of lumber dropped 75%. Fertilizer, oil, natural gas prices all plummeted, even with the war in Ukraine and energy shortages in Europe throughout the second half of 2022 and the first half of 2023. Back in January of 2023, we shared with you the data about peak inflation. Here's that great chart from Barry Bannister at Stiefel Financial showing the lead times for peak CPI versus the lows and pivot up in the S&P 500. Since World War II, the average length of the lag was seven months after peak CPI print. The peak CPI print of 9.1% was in June of 2022. That would put the timing of the average pivot up in stock starting around, yes, you guessed it, January 2023, which happened, of course, spot on cue. Investors, the problem now is that one, investor inflation expectations for a symmetrical drop in inflation that our team has discussed for 18 months have finally caught up to the reality. Two, inflation is seasonal and it usually picks up in the first quarter. And three, inflation is set to rise throughout the rest of January into February on the back of many of the exact same reasons for the repeat of the 1970s inflation hysteria zealots that they were talking about 18 months ago. Here are a few of the current reasons for a likely seasonal upturn in inflation. Yes, as we film, shipping rates have skyrocketed on the back of the Middle East Red Sea military exercises and low water levels in the Panama Canal. Second, energy prices are troughing, whether it's the cold weather here in the United States pushing up natural gas prices higher the last two weeks or the Middle East turmoil turning up the oil markets. Higher 
energy prices are bad for inflation data and bad for consumer sentiment. Here's a chart of the real-time two-year break-even inflation rates. These are real-time. Investors, this isn't government data that takes months to compile and disseminate, and it's revised many times. One can clearly see that historically, a lower trend in inflation is good, and a stable level of inflation is good, and a lower trend from a higher level is good, but a low level trending higher is bad for the markets. Case in point from a recent example of the final point, low inflation trending higher, we don't have to go back very far. In fact, we just have to go back to mid-January of 2023 through late February. Inflation expectations rose for about six weeks and the cash S&P 500 dropped 300 points or about 9% from there, from 4,195 to 3,800 in about six weeks, from early February through mid-March. Our team has highlighted that period in the S&P 500 chart. Hi everyone, just a brief interruption here to invite you to our annual live client event. Chris, Charles and I are going to discuss major risks in the stock market for 2024, the potential direction the markets could go and why, and what all of this means for you, your portfolio and your retirement. In addition, we're going to discuss an exciting launch that we think could be a game changer for your retirement. Join us as we lift up the curtain into our live client event that we do every single year, January 25th at 6.30 p.m. Central, our annual market outlook. The second thing we've discussed multiple times over the last few years that really matters to investors is real interest rates. Investors, remember that the treasury yield you get paid by the bank is the nominal interest rate. It's the sum of the inflation component and the real yield premium, also called the tips yield. The real interest yield component of the treasury goes a long way in determining the risk premium that investors are willing to pay for equities. When our Federal Reserve and other central banks around the world ran a world of zero and negative interest rates, this enabled and forced investors into a world of holding large equity positions because money was essentially free. It created the notion of TINA, or there is no alternative. There's been a very strong and inverse correlation between the multiple on the S&P 500 investors are willing to pay and the direction of the two-year real interest rate. Here's an 18-month chart of the two-year real yield. It troughed in late November of 2021 and pivoted up as many Federal Reserve members began talking more hawkishly behind the scenes, even though Chairman Powell was out publicly still worrying about employment. The interest rate, of course, peaked in mid-October of 2023 just as virtually every strategist on TV was out mirroring and messaging the Fed's phrase, higher for longer, and talking about academic nonsense around the theoretical R-star levels. This piece of data and this chart is almost entirely behind the November and December stock market rallies around the world. But you might ask, Chris, why aren't you more optimistic about the markets this year? Your team only has a target of 5,000 in the first half of 2024 for a target on the S&P 500. You might ask, why are you so cautious if lower trending real interest rates is generally good for stocks and their multiples? It's the reason Tina existed for so long. That's what you told us almost a year ago when almost everyone was negative, but your team was optimistic. Because history also says that there's a tipping point between positive investor sentiment and lower real interest rates as well. There's a point where lower real interest rates become a symptom of the economy that's not just slowing, but stalling and potentially heading into negative growth territory. And that's where investor optimism for the so-called soft landing flips from hopeful and optimistic to worried, doubtful, and pessimistic. So what does this mean to you, the investor? Investors, this is a setup seasonally for higher trending inflation in the first quarter, coupled with lower and falling real growth expectations that align with our team's messaging for the first half of 2024. Expect a period of higher volatility in the markets over the coming four to six weeks as other investors see these trends and start to worry about the outcome of a soft landing scenario. A completely normal outcome would be, at best, a continued stall for January and February in the overall markets, or more likely, a sharp pullback post-January option expiration into month-end February, much as what transpired in 2023. Whatever the case, the two things that have really mattered for your stock and bond portfolios the last two years are the same two things. And it's not time to get FOMO or fear of missing out as a better entry point in both price and time will likely show itself from lower levels in February. From the whole team here at Oak Harvest, have a blessed week and a fantastic new year.